Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India very good morning, good evening, good afternoon uh, to all my students at whatever time you are um, trying to listen to these lectures and hope uh, all of you are enjoying this course and finding it interesting considering whatever con concepts we are trying to cover in this course. So, this is the 13th lecture in the 14th T lecture series for project management which is of 20 hours. So, each lecture is half an hour. So, we are trying to cover uh, topics or portion of a topic or sub topics uh, in those half an hours and, and planning it accordingly. So, in the 11th and the 12th lecture if you remember we have covered the concept of AHP done with a simple problem. Obviously, there would be many queries from, from the students that uh, how AHP can be utilized. So, again I will urge the, my, the students, the participants to send the queries to the forum and we will definitely take care of answering on an individual basis or on a collective basis depending on the type of queries uh, they are. And the last uh, lecture which is the 12th one, we started discussing uh, two problems in uh, decision trees. W in first problem we has, we had the concept of unconditional distribution as the distribution values based on which the expected value of the decision tree was found out based on which you take a decision. And in the second problem uh, for the decision tree analysis, we considered the conditional distribution condition on some prior happening whatever event what was there and we saw in that problem for the drilling example how we could solve it using the conditional values along uh, the, the marginal values and the conditional values of the probability along on the cells in that matrix and the marginal values along the, the bottom most row and the rightmost uh, column. Now, just to wrap up the problem, if you remember we found out the expected value at all the values of C's and D's. C's and D's you know, those are the forks of the decision or the chance fork, forks where you di diverge into different um, uh, nodes or, or different directions of decisions. So, once you apply all the, the concepts and when, once you have the problem, the final output of the problem looks like as shown in the slide. So, now it is the first time we had made a distinction in the red and the blue color of the arrows, where the blue color means these are the decision which should be taken considering the expected value concept and where it is positive or, or, or less negative. So, it can be less negative can be basically you are trying to have not in this problem as such, but next negative say for example, you have minus 21, minus 22 and minus 10. So, if you want to maximize your your profit or minimize your loss profit is all negative loss is definitely with the negative value so you'll take the value of 10 now in case it is negative with respect to 0 you will take 0 so if you pay attention the upper arm was basically not viable when you consider so you are basically starting from the right so in in this arm this whole set where the blue is no drill, it means that the value was 0, hence you took that. Then you, you followed it taking your decision for the, the third set of, of, of decisions related to whether it is dry, wet and soaking, the, the, the drill effect and where you find um, least amount of oil and maximum amount of oil considering you went from dry structure to wet structure to the soaking structure. So, if you start going on to the, um, uh, to the left to the final um, uh, answer that means, your where you initially start. So, these red values are the one as I am re again repeating which cannot be taken and the, and the blue ones are the one which could definitely be taken. So, if you find out the overall uh, the diagram it is you definitely have to conduct a test 
and depending on the outcome which is no structure which is this part uh, open structure which is the small horizontal line where I am hovering my pen and this what uh, this uh, diagonal arrow which is going downwards is basically the closed structure and then you have the overall the values as given. So, these values are exactly the same for the last slide which we covered. So, again to to make things uh, doubly clear for all the candidates or the participants, these negative values are the outflows which are in the negative sense and this 0 0.8, 2.4 which are plus are shown in blue. And again the value of 0 0.02, and, and all those things values are the so called sunk costs. So, now if, we, if I consider this ways to manage the project risk, so you basically juggle between the fixed and the variable cost, uh, I am sure people can see this or I will try to basically increase the font size to 160. So, I am now sure it is absolutely visible. So, uh, you will have the surprising strategy of my, my mistake, there is a small c missing here. You have different type of concept of in sequential in investment, improving informations, that means you get the better informations, you have financial leverages. If you remember the financial cost, the internal earn rate of return, the fluctuating rates and all these things, we will come to that with, with set of 5 to 6 different problems, different type of problems. You have, you can take the concept of insurance into the picture such that you reduce your risk. You can go for long term arrangements of borrowing and lending in order to minimize the overall risk. So, in the risk profile method, we must be aware of the probability distribution which is the net present value which is absolutely a fixed term and net present value is very simply the expected value and try to convert the same to the probability distribution of, of probability index of relative measures as that you are able to compare the risk based on the fact that uh, the concept of um, interest rate can also be brought into the picture. Now, if you consider the risk adjusted when we were doing the CAPAM model, even though it is uh, applicable into investments, investment in financial investments, it can also be replicated in the sense where the investments are more um, projects and each projects. Uh, has different type of activities or jobs underneath it. So, your risk adjusted discounting rate would be consisting of 4 terms which are the risk adjusted uh, um, discounted rate of the kth project which you need to find out and compare. Then you have the risk free interest rate again going back to R suffix f and the adjustments um, adjustment for the firm's notional risk values whatever you have. And DK is the adjustment for the differential risk for the kth projects which may be different. So, hence if I am able to find out the net present value would be given by this formula. So, NPV for the kth project is given suffix k. Now, what we have is basically two terms inside the square bracket is the positive term and outside the square bracket this i k has a negative. So, i k basically means the overall investment which you are going to do or say for example, the sunk cost, fixed cost, variable cost which are done at uh, a particular time. So, or different points of time, I am not, not using the word only at a fixed point of time, it can be at different points. So, consider that you are planning to invest, trying to build up a project at the starting which is the 0th time period t is equal to 0, then again at t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, this 1, 2, 3, 4 can be either months or can be weeks, can be years, quarters, it does not matter. And even if the time frames are different for, for, for the fixed cost, the investments considering the returns are at, at different points of time at different intervals, it does not matter, you just need to find out the time value of money at, per, at a particular time which is t is equal to 0. So, this i k is the sum of all the investments in the negative sense that means, money you have put it in the project at different points of time. So, this is the value of money at time t is equal to 0, while which the for, for simplistic case I have not written down into the equation format. While the set of values which you have inside the brackets, 
So, e a k is basically the expected of the estimated cash flow for the kth project at different points of time t is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So, hence the suffix a k is for the project t is for the time and in the denominator you have if you look is the exactly the same formula we have discussed um, a few slides back or in, in, in one of the classes where R k is the risk adjusted interest rate and T is the time period. So, say if, uh, consider that if you consider the problem for the um, uh, moped, the decision tree analysis problem which we did for a company trying to start with the moped just before the, the oil drilling example. There you had a time period of 20 years for 20 million per year and 30 million per year and the interest rate was 12 percent. So, that interest rate R k suffix k is 12, it may change for project, from project to project. So, this whole formula is exactly the same what we have done in that problem. So, now we can formulate the problem accordingly, where the value of the net present value or NPV can be done considering that you multiply the overall so called payback which is happening by a value of alpha k t. So, the alpha k t very simply k and t means for the project k and t is the time period this is basically the weightages you are going to put for the first project, second project, third project whatever it is for time period t is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 accordingly. So, here alpha k t in some sense the, uh, the, the overall weightages, weightages why weightages because there would be some certainty value. So, if I am certain that for the project I am with probability 90 percent uh, that the payback would definitely be positive, then that value of alpha k t would be 0 0.9 corresponding to other projects it would be denoted accordingly. So, again i k I am again repeating is the net present value of the investment, a k is the expected or the estimated cash flow which is coming back r f is the, the risk free interest rate and R alpha k t is the certainty equivalent. Now, only one thing between change in these formulas, if you see this formula which has R f and alpha k and try to compare with value of R k, the relationship between the certainty value or say for example, the overall net value which you are going to get from each, each investment payback at time t is equal to 0 would be calculated based on the fact that R f, R k and alpha are related. So, higher the value of say for example, alpha is certainty equivalent corresponding to that fact you will try to find out R k value given R f is known to you or vice versa whatever it is. But generally we will try to basically bring a same datum where you will have R k being replaced by the certainty value alpha and R f for the risk free interest rate because our risk free interest rate would be same for all the projects. Then the overall risk for that project considering the interest rate from point of view of the interest rate would be basically subsumed under the value of alpha for each project for each time because interest rate is changing for time period to time period. So, that in the again going back to the moped problem it was 20 12 percent for each time period consider it is not 12, it is 10, 11, 9, 13 whatever it is. So, these interest rate have to be adjusted considering R f is there which is fixed and this adjustment would come into the factor which is alpha as I mentioned few minutes back it is the certainty equivalent. So, if alpha k t is 1 then the person is risk indifferent we will consider that. If it is less than 1 it is a risk bar avoider and greater than 1 basically means that person is risk love loves the risk. So, this word would be loves the risk. So, if I consider the concept of certainty value index in general we may term this as the problem which are going to consider in, in, in a very simplistic sense. So, I, I would not go to the assignment as such I will just go through the concept and basically close this 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 topic in order to be dealing that using the utility concept. So, this assignment which is there in the last part is not to be done as of now, we will consider that later on. 
So, in general we may term it as the probability of being positive that is we say the certainty index of procuring the raw materials at 85 percent it means the probability the raw materials are obtained is 85. So, if we remember the weightages we gave is that if it is 1 it is 100 percent certain if it is not then obviously it would mean that there is a change in the certainty value for different um, uh, small events or, or activities with respect to time. Thus, in a problem we can have the following one. So, if you see this table, you have the research and development, the marketing and starting the project and procuring the raw materials along the first column and along <coughs> the, the other second, third, fourth, fifth year wise, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, you have the certainty values which are given. Say for example, for research and development, this just a values are given. 0.68 or say for example, for starting the project at time t and for the kth project. Say for example, this is for the third project and I am trying to find out the certainty value of starting the project in the third year, then the value of the alpha would be alpha k t for k is equal to third project, t is equal to third year, it will be 76 percentage or 0.76. So, you have the values accordingly. In evaluation, remember I have the, there are three stages of completion of the project such that we can have a case like this A leads to B which leads to C and then D to A to C and then to B. So, there are two, two consequences of how things are being done like you procure the material, you do the initial processing of the raw materials, then the raw materials is basically worked on in, in the final stages and then sold. So, if I consider procurement, initial processing, final processing, selling, fourth stage. So, A which is the first one would affect B, B would affect C which is the third stage and D would basically affect the last stage which is the selling. So, if I am not able to get the good quality products, raw materials is pure, still I go in producing, then what effect it would have in the overall probability sense would be the probability or the, the the chance of selling that product in the market would be definitely be less. So, the probability of D which is the last one dependent on C, B, A has already uh, happened would be very low. So, what you will have if probability of A if you look at this term then probability of B provided A has happened and the third term is probability of C provided A and B has happened and the last term there you have is probability of D provided A, B and C has already happened. So, you can find it accordingly. In other sense, if the consequence is something the flow of, of, the, of the jobs or the activities or the investments are like this, it will happen as probability of C is dependent on A, probability of B is now dependent on A and C which has already occurred and probability D would basically depend on A. B, C has already occurred. I am using the, the sequence of the, of the events as A, B, C, but it technically if you see the, the last two terms in these two lines, it is D dependent on A, B, C and in other case it is D dependent on A, C, B as the consequence of the events which basically occur. So, now with this I will basically start off the concept of decision trees and utilities. We have already done the problem in decision trees utility analysis and how they can be utilized in order to make different type of decisions for the projects. So, let me change from the word document to the PPT for the further discussion. So, now we will consider the concept of decision analysis. So, you are the CEO of a company which manufactures three different ratings of electrical motors and they have the following. This is just a, 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 a make up or trying to basically build up the motivation for why decision tree an, uh, analysis were used and how it can be utilized for different type of problems later on. So, you have the following informations in front of you. You have three different type of motor ratings. So, e building up a motor it can also be a project. Motor ratings have 75 kilowatt with certain unknown uh, demand of numbers considered as D1. Motor rating 150 kilowatts has a demand of D2 and motor rating 200 
kilowatts has a demand of D3. So, there is no relationship as such we are considering between D1, D2, D3. They can be independent, but uh, they can be dependent also. You have the selling price for these ratings, uh, rupees 15,000 for the 75, rupees 35,000 for the 151 and rupees 50,000 for the 200 kilowatts. So, what you are interested um, to finding out is the number D1, D2, D3, the demand with certain probabilities such that if you want to find out the overall input on, on the profit front, considering we are not going to consider the cost structure for the time being. So, what you would need would be like this. Let me write in a very simple way manner. So, this is this I will just use this pen for the marking for the time being, but I will try to write, write it accordingly. So, you have the selling price given as 15,000, 35,000 and 50,000. So, what I want to do is sum up for all the three, I am using the mouse for the time being and then we will check uh, once um, uh, it is stabilized. So, you will have basically a demand D, so D it will be D 1, D 2, D 3. You, have other, you will have the probabilities P, which will be P 1, P 2, 3, 3 and you will basically have the selling price, which is S P 1, S P 2, S P 3, which is 15,000, 35,000 and 50,000. Now, this is basically the sum. Now, remember one thing considering that the probability is there for each and every item, we will consider simplistically that the sum of the sum is probability is 1. They can be conditional probabilities also and they can be loss sales also. That means, products are not sold, but we would not consider that. We will consider demand as deterministic and that has some distribution and the selling price which you are considering does not consider the concept of cost, cost of the raw materials and, and uh, considered in this problem. So, in case we had the cost uh, concept, it would become like this. Now, in this problem, again let me go back. So, it will be basically selling price minus the cost price. So, say for example, so this would be cost price for each and every um, item which you are considering. So, if selling price is 15,000 and the cost price for the 75 kilowatt is, is considered 5,000, it will be 15,000 minus 5,000 for the first term inside the bracket multiplied by the probability P1 multiplied by D1. Similarly, it will be selling price 35,000 minus some cost price is CP2 inside a bracket multiplied by the demand D2 probability P2 and for the third case it will be again if you see the slide it is 50,000 minus the cost price P CP3 inside the bracket multiplied by demand 3 D3 and probability P3. So, if you are interested to find these numbers D1, D2, D3 consider that the optimistic demand, probabilistic demand and so called pessimistic demand it can be any combinations. We consider very simply that there are two outcomes of the demand, very good, bad or average, bad or it can be good or bad, like basically you are tossing a coin. So, this head and tail, there are only two outcomes. The probabilities are with optimistic 7 by 10 for 75, 3 by 10 for, um, um, for 200. So, okay, no, no, sorry, sorry, my mistake. So, for the 75 one, the demand values which is given is value wise that is D 1 is given as 200, uh, 300 with probability 7 by 10, 200 with the probability of 3 by 10. So, now demand numbers are also changing. Similarly, for 150 and 200 kilowatts, the corresponding probabilities if you see in point bullet point number 2 and bullet point number 3, it is 5 by 15 and 10 by 15 for the 150 kilowatt. And similarly, the values for the probabilities are 1 by 5 and 4 by 5 for the 200 kilowatts. The corresponding numbers demands D3 for the third type of motors for these two cases of 1 by 4 and 5 and 4 by 5 are 60 and 30. Similarly, for the 150 kilowatt, 
for probabilities of 5 by 15 and 10 by 15 it is, it is 210 and 100. So, this based on that you will just put in the formulas and calculate it accordingly. Now, this is the decision tree diagram which we have tried to analyze using the simple problems. It is given like this. The arms are the 75, 150, 200, the corresponding units are given, corresponding probabilities are given. So, for the probabilistic decision problem, what we need to find out is the expected value as already done in the problem and already showed in the last to last slide. So, now if I want to find out D1, considering that I want to find out on an average. So, the, if you see for the 75, 150 and, and 200, they were for different probabilities. So, you multiply the demand in the probability, demand in the probability, find it out for uh, motor first which is 75, motor 2 which is 150, motor 3 which is 200 and you find out the corresponding values. This, this is very simple way of trying to solve it. Hence, the expected value figures are given. You multiply inside the bracket the numbers multiplied by the selling price and you find it out. So, exactly the same only the, the quantum of numbers showed uh, are changing. So, what is the actual analysis what we, we are trying to aim for the decision tree analysis is that the probabilistic framework has to be changed into the deterministic framework in order to find out what is the expected value and based on that we take our decision. So, if I see the probabilistic framework on the left hand side where I am pointing, there are probabilities P1 to P4, um, um, the corresponding values are W1 to W4. What are W1 and what are W2 two values? We will come to that later, W1, W2, W3 you want to equate it with the corresponding to a certainty value with probability 1 and what is the value of W. So, I um, will just give the brief definition of utility analysis and then end uh, this uh, lecture for this 13th le uh, lecture series and then continue all the discussions in the starting from the 14th one. So, what we mean by de decision analysis and the concept of utility is this, like rather than paying attention to the slide, I will just request the, the students to like listen to what I am saying. Consider that you want to basically invest in trying to buy a car or say for example, you want to invest in trying to bait, um, invest your time in trying to basically get a good education or buy a house or, or invest in trying to basically build up a project. So, in utility analysis, your main value is want to find out what is the network and the utility or the value or the, or the concept of so called positive sense which you try to get by trying to invest in certain project or certain decisions or certain investment. So, say for example, if a person wants to buy the best shirt at a very high price, you may as a, as a other person may think that what is the value of trying to basically buy a such a high price shirt, but it may mean or it may imply to the, the person who is trying to buy that, that high price shirt is that it gives him or her a certain sense of say for example, being very smart or say for example, trying to use a branded product or say for example, it is very comfortable or made out of the best cotton. So, whenever you are trying to analyze a problem in the concept of utility analysis, think carefully that what is the net worth a person is trying to get in order to make that decision worthwhile for him or her. So, with this I will close this 13th lecture and start from the same slide considering the fact that what I have just mentioned about the utility from the very qualitative perspective would slowly be transferred in the quantitative field so that the, all, the, all the students who are taking this course and trying to understand the concept of utility analysis and how it is used in project management would appreciate that. Thank you very much and have a nice day.